So we've come together to think about what it means to understand sex, and specifically what it means to understand sex scientifically. To do that, we're going back in time to a period towards the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, when the science of sex, or sexology, emerged as a discipline. But we're trying to rethink the history of sexology. In particular, we're keen to challenge our tendency to think about sexology as a narrow medical field or discipline. Um, and to do that, we want to show that um, sexology was actually very interested in a wide range of different forms of knowledge, which we want to explore to offer a new history of sexology. Yeah, so what we found, what we're finding, is that at this point in time, early in the 20th century, in order to be properly scientific, our sexologists thought that you needed to be cross-disciplinary. So actually, at that historical moment, there was an understanding that to do sexual science, you had to study, for instance, anthropology, archaeology, history, literature, and sociology, in addition to biology, endocrinology, psychiatry, and zoology, for instance. And we want to, in this project, examine this exciting cross-disciplinary moment um, to offer a new account of the emergence of sexual science. And when we do that, when we look at the cross-disciplinary uh, work produced by sexual science at this time, we get new perspectives on the core ideas of what sex is and who we are that really structure modern ways of thinking. For instance, the idea that sexual behaviour could be normal or abnormal, healthy or pathological, or the notion that our sexual desires might be a product of nature or nurture. When you look at this exciting moment and when you look at the cross-disciplinary dimensions of sexual science, so you get a whole new sense of how these core ideas that structure the way we think about the human subject and sex developed and took shape. So the sexologists, when they turned to, for instance, anthropology or history or literature, they often did so to provide evidence about sexual diversity and sexual variation. And when they engaged with this evidence, they actually came to challenge the idea that it is easy to classify sexual behaviour as either normal or abnormal, or as healthy and pathological. And they also started to think very critically about the idea that sexuality is a matter of nature and nurture. And sometimes you even see the sexologist collapse that very distinction between nature and nurture. We're also hoping that this project will help us develop new ways of thinking about challenges facing the medical humanities. Because we've discovered a moment in history when science sought and was cross-disciplinary, and we think that this can provide a whole range of tools for thinking about cross-disciplinarity in the present. So when you look at the way in which sexologists worked across disciplines, you can gain new insights into what is at stake when you try to work across disciplines, how difficult it is to work across disciplines, and just really understand the dynamics involved when people try to collaborate and communicate with each other across disciplines. In um, developing these historical perspectives, we can really help to develop and shape the future of the medical humanities. An important part of our project is to develop an ambitious public engagement and impact programme. As part of our research we're learning about many different ways of studying, thinking about and talking about sex and we want to use these insights into these many different and diverse forms of knowledge in order to intervene in debates about sex today. So we're going to be developing our research with non-academic partners such as schools, museums, youth groups, the LGBT community, creative artists and sexual health practitioners. To do this work we're assembling an interdisciplinary team of researchers and non-academic collaborators. And we want to work together to address urgent challenges and debates about sexuality, sexual health and well-being today.